Even if you've been in the aquarium hobby for just one day, you probably already have a really good story to tell. So we all have our aquarium stories. Some good, some bad, and I'm telling you, some belong in a horror movie. I've read some of you guys' tank stories on Reef Century. They belong in a saw movie or something. Now that story could be what happened to you the first time you went to the fish store, or you know, what happened when you bought your first fish for the first time, or how you actually killed your fish for the first time because you mistakenly left it in the car while it was 120 degrees outside because you needed to run into Chipotle really quick. Now, that never happened to me. Now, most of you guys already know about that time I turned my 150 gallon tank into an Arnold Palmer. And for you guys that don't know what an Arnold Palmer is, it's when you mix lemonade and iced tea together. Mmm, I just got thirsty. I went and drunk that tank water though. Today's story takes place back when I had a 93 gallon cube aquarium. And it's about a heater. Now I know that the heater is one of the simplest pieces of equipment in our fish tanks, right? But you know, you could even say that it's probably one of the most important pieces in our tanks as well. Well, unless you have a penguin tank. But I mean, I mean can you imagine being the first person on your block with a penguin? I mean, you say, yo, you got Nemo, but yo, I got happy feet. All right, all right, I'm getting distracted. All right, so one night, about two years ago, while I laid in a deep sleep, and I dreamed about supermodels. I, I mean, Shark Week. That's what I was dreaming about, Shark Week. My wife gently wakes me from my slumber. Why are you smiling in your sleep? What you dreaming about? I don't sound like that. <clears throat> Can you please stop interrupting my story? Sorry about that, guys. All right. So now as I slowly awake from my sleep, now done with my Shark Week dream, my wife tells me she woke up and she actually smells something. So we head downstairs to investigate. We check the stove, the fridge, the garage. Now you would think our dog would be able to help us out, tell us where the problem is. Hey boy, hey boy, where's that smell? Where's that smell? <laughs> so finally we open our filtration room, <coughs> closet behind our 93 gallon tank. As soon as we open the door, smoke slowly creeps out the room. I look into our sump and smoke is just pouring out of our heater. I'm now running around like the kid from Home Alone not knowing what to do. All right, so I'm in full-blown Liz Lemon panic mode. So my wife knows she has to step up and do something. So you mean like the time when you were actually driving and you jumped out of the car, left me and our daughter in the car because of a bee? Can you please stop interrupting my story? Anyway, so the heater's smoking, I'm panicking, but you know, in a manly way. So my wife does a Naruto Rasengan somersault into the filtration room and shuts off the GFI surge protector. Then she comes and calms me down. Ah, she is such a loving wife. So I'm calm now, so I reach into the sump to assess the damage. I take the heater out of the sump and it's completely burnt up near where the cord meets the actual top of the heater. Now Marineland did eventually recall the heater. I actually didn't take a picture when the chaos was actually ensuing, but I got these um, pictures from people who actually had the same problem. Thanks homies. We didn't choose the cram life, the cram life chose us. Yeah, okay, I stole that from Swoozy, but it worked there. So now I'm worried about what chemicals may have leaked into my tank. But it's like 2 a.m., so of course no fish doors are open. Tell me why stuff like this always happens when the fish doors are closed. If this would have happened a year later, I would have been fine, but this was way before I had my pure fresh water processing station in my state-of-the-art quarantine system. All right, I'm no expert, but I knew I needed to do a water change. But I've watched enough New York Stilo and Mr. Saltwater fish tank to know that I shouldn't be using tap water in my fish tank. But unless you live in Canada, I heard they got some good tap water over there. Any Canadians that watch this, let me know. All right, so I'm out of options. I have to use tap water, but it has to be better than whatever is leaking to my tank from that heater. Now, luckily, I had some Prime, which removes chlorine, chlorine, and ammonia. It also detoxifies nitrates and nitrites 
and it also provides a slime cone for the fish. <laughs> Not a sponsor. Unless they want to be a sponsor, shoo, I ain't turning down no money. I ain't got time for that. So at this point, I had a few soft corals, a huge naso, yellow tang, a pair of perks, one mandarin gobi, two scooters, one vermigli, New Guinea wrasse, enough inverts to clean the entire Georgia Aquarium, and a gangster cleaner shrimp. We'll talk about that cleaner shrimp a little latest. Now for the next hour, I'm mixing water in a 50 gallon garbage can in my garage. Now this is before I was actually smart enough to start using a pump to circulate the water. So I just got into the garbage can like it was a sauna and just kicked around in it. Hey, don't judge me. Have you ever been in a saltwater freezing cold sauna? Okay then. Anyway, I figure I'll do a 50% water change and then when the fish store opens the next day, I would just call them over to bring another 50% of water. So I get done with the water change, install a spare glass heater I had lying around and go back to sleep. <sighs> when I wake up a couple of hours later, our beautiful naso is dead and the mandarin is breathing hard. So I call Marine Designs to bring some water and they decide to do an 80% water change to try to get any toxins that were left in the tank out. Now Marine Designs, they did a great job, but eventually in a few weeks, every fish in that tank died. Except that gangster cleaner shrimp. Funny story about that shrimp. After the heater disaster, we decided to break down a 93 gallon cube and sell it. We were out a lot of money already for all the fish we had in the tank, so we just needed a break from it. So the day I decided to break down the tank, the cleaner shrimp was nowhere to be found. I started taking out every rock and inspecting it for that little guy, but I, I mean, I just couldn't find him. So I got all the rocks out and sat them outside, because I, since I was planning to sell them on Craigslist as base rock, um, I really didn't have a lot of room to make stations, to, you know, to keep them as live rock, so I just put them out in the sun. You know, when you're selling things on Craigslist, all you aquarium guys know how you be haggling you know, over aquarium stuff on Craigslist. I could be selling an aquarium made out of solid gold for $100. And someone will call me from Craigslist and say, so, I see you selling a solid gold aquarium for $100. And I'll be like, yeah, I am. And they'll say, so, are there any scratches in the glass? No, nah, no scratches. Well, um, is there any equipment that comes with the tank? And I'll be like, uh, no, it's just a solid gold tank that's worth a million dollars. Oh, that's it, huh? Yeah, that's it. Only for a hundred dollars. Um, I really need a filter and lights. So I I'm going to have to get back to you. Wait, you do know this solid gold tank is worth a million dollars, right? And they'll be like, yeah, but I I'm looking for a total package. So anyway, with all the rocks now out of the tank, I search through the sand for the shrimp. I mean, and he is nowhere to be found. I give up and just figured he died somehow and I just didn't notice. So I go back outside to rinse off the live rock and I notice something on the concrete. I look a little bit closer and it's the cleaner shrimp lying right there on the hot concrete. He must have been inside one of the rocks. But it's hot today and so as he sits there on that concrete, I mean, he starts to grill up nicely. Mm, good enough to eat. But I didn't have any hot sauce, so I picked them up and threw them into our 30 gallon pipe fish tank. Oh yes, our tank portfolio is deep. I didn't have high hopes for that shrimp to live, but if he didn't make it, there was always option B in hot sauce. I'm not sure why you guys have fish tanks, but mine's is a refrigerator. Have you ever tasted Nemo? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But that tough shrimp made it and is still living till today. And that's why I forever call him, you know, Mr. Gangster Shrimp. So, well, they eventually recalled all those heaters, as I said, but, you know, I was out all of my fish. So, I, I hope you guys like this story. There have been so many crazy things that have happened to me in this hobby. But I'm sure we all would like to see all of you guys funny or horror aquarium stories too. So if you guys have any crazy aquarium stories, message them to me here on YouTube. I'll pick the best one, and even though I'm not the best drawer in the world, <laughs> I'll make a video about them just like this one. Maybe uh, once a month. Now, don't be complaining once a month, because you know how long it takes to draw these pictures? 
and it takes even longer when you have no talent for drawing like me. All right, do me a favor and hit that like button if you enjoyed the story. For you newbies, hit that subscribe button. Until next time, this is the ultimate hobby.